millions of people around the world suffer from irregular heartbeats. This can affect the amount of blood the heart can pump around the body, leading to dizziness, shortness of breath, and in the worst cases, heart attacks or strokes. One of the main causes is when the heart's electrical system goes wrong. I'm Anya Sitharam and I'm in London to find out how advanced medical technology is helping treat the condition. A healthy heart is controlled by electrical impulses which originate from the heart's pacemaker, the sinoatrial node, and travel along pathways through the four chambers. This causes the muscles to contract in a controlled rhythm, pushing blood from the heart to the lungs and the rest of the body. We're treating here at the Brompton very complex patients that have faulty heart rhythms. The heart starts racing suddenly, and sometimes medication doesn't work really well, and we try to find the spot in the heart that makes that heart race. To locate these defective points, the doctor has to insert a catheter or fine tube into the heart, all the way up from the groin. Well, normally, I would take a normal catheter, a conventional catheter, which is one like this, fairly stiff, and I steer from the handle here. That would be a, the normal way of steering this catheter. But we have to go quite a complex way. With a constant risk of puncturing the heart, control is everything. I have a little magnet here to show you. I can steer and change oh, the direction wow. of the catheter. By using magnets, Dr. Ernst can steer the catheter with much more precision. But for the real operation, she won't be using these magnets, she'll be using these, each weighing over a ton. And I'm going to steer the whole catheter procedure from outside. Dr. Ernst has rigged up a dummy heart, which she uses for training. You could have a go if you want to. You're not serious, are you? No, I'm serious. OK, go ahead. <laughs> OK, so what do I do? So let's try to point up to the the blue. And it's going to follow you right away. Now, I could say, get the catheter tip to this place. Oh, that's too much. I missed it. A little bit more to the side. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> that was easy. I bet you're good at computer games. I'm very good at computer games. I'm, I'm, I always say that this is one of the first training. But today's procedure isn't a game. They'll be performing a potentially life-saving operation on Debbie Statham Britton, who's had problems with her heart since childhood. Well, three weeks ago, I was in work and I was taken unwell. Um, I thought I was just having a slight palpitation, but um, my heart was beating very fast and it was just continuous and it wasn't stopping at all. Debbie was born with the heart's two main arteries the wrong way round. An operation to correct this has left scar tissue, which blocks the heart's electrical signals. New pathways have formed around the scars, which make the electrical impulse travel much faster, causing the heart to race. So what we're going to do is, first of all, get the 3D pictures from the MRI scan so that they sit on top of the X-ray picture. So I get the whole roadmap where I have to go. The catheter is shown as this little icon here, this little colored thing. So I really have to come up the red, turn around in the yellow, and then end up in this area. That's the place where they have to go. Using a reference catheter, which she inserted earlier, Dr. Ernst electrically stimulates Debbie's heart. Initial heart rate was around 50 beats. Now our heart race is in 130 beats. Why do you need to make it race? Because I need to understand exactly which place the arrhythmia takes, which, which course it takes. And once I've understood which area is actually involved, I can then interrupt that. Very likely that this goes in a circuit, and I just need to then break that circuit. Using the magnetic catheter and a 3D mapping program, Dr. Ernst measures the time the electrical signal takes to move from the first reference catheter to a series of locations inside the heart, represented by the red waves on the screen. What's happened now is Dr. Ernst has actually mapped the heart. She's found out where the faulty electrical signal is, and she's now going to burn little bits around the heart to interrupt the faulty electrical signal. So I'm now very, very sure that I know exactly where to burn the inside of Debbie's heart. So I'm going to make a line from here to there. At some point, the Ticardia should stop. You can hear the beep. That's 
is the ablation so turned that, on. That's the burning. That that's the burning, down. exactly. Yeah, so everyone in the room now knows this is a critical part. How many seconds is that? Uh, 95 seconds. Ricola has an eye on the pressure. Okay, so it has already slowed down, which is showing the blating her heart at the right place. But we need to make that line complete. What's her cycle length now? 380. Oh, you don't need to pace. Let's just stop pacing. She's a good enough rate. And her heart was racing. We made this line. We interrupted the tachycardia, and it stopped. So you got Debbie's heartbeat to around uh, 60? 68, 69 beats per minute at the moment. So. Um, that's normal. That's absolutely normal. That's her normal rhythm. That's, That's good. what we want her to have. Yeah. So that means Debbie's heart problems are now cured once and for all. After three hours, the procedure is over. A conventional manual catheter procedure would have taken almost double the time, and only a minute's worth of X-ray with potentially harmful radiation was used. So how's it going? Oh, good. It's really good. I'm feeling much, much better, thank you. You look much better. Oh, I feel it. <laughs> now, I gather you weren't actually asleep during the operation. You were actually aware of what was going on. Yeah, I was. <laughs> but it was fine. It was OK. I was really surprised. Um, I could feel when, um, when they started my heart beating fast to find the area that they needed. Um, yeah, I could feel... The my heart going much, much faster. And then when they were doing the actual burning of the area, I was aware of the sensation of the burning that they were doing. And um, what difference do you think it's made to you? Oh, it's made a huge difference, to be honest. I didn't realise how unwell I, f I was actually feeling. Mm. Um, now I've had it done, I can see how I wasn't right at all. I didn't feel at all well. Um, so it'd be nice to get back to being me.